One of the worst things that you can do to a healthy ecosystem is introduce a non-native animal. Invasive species are one of the leading causes of extinctions, and they can also cause millions of dollars worth of damage. On this channel I've covered many interesting stories about invasive species, and it's shocking to find out how many times the animal was introduced on purpose. Many invasive species find their way into the ecosystem through the pet trade, but sometimes the government will intentionally release them. This is what happened in places such as Australia and New Zealand, and both of these countries are still recovering. Sometimes governments will try and introduce a species to fix a problem, or to get rid of another invasive species. In today's video I will be going through just a few of these cases, but not all animal introductions end badly. To take a look at our first animal we will be heading to South America, as we have the Andean condor. The Andean condor is the only member of its genus, and it's found in the Andes Mountains and the Pacific coasts of Western South America. It is one of the largest flying birds in the world, with a wingspan of up to 3.3 meters and a max weight of around 15 kilograms. It's considered to be the largest bird of prey in the world, and it's one of the most iconic South American animals. This species is primarily a scavenger, and it mostly feeds on the carcasses of large animals. If they can find enough food they can live up to 70 years old, but Andean condors of this age are relatively rare nowadays. The Andean condor is currently listed as vulnerable, as it does face many human related threats. It's suffered due to habitat loss, and as it's a scavenger it's also suffered due to secondary poisoning. If it feeds on animals that have been killed by humans, it can swallow the lead from the bullets and become poisoned. This form of poisoning affects many scavengers around the world, but birds seem to be the most common victims. Strangely, the Andean condor is not the only condor that's been in peril in recent decades, as the California condor almost completely disappeared. This bird is the largest North American land bird, and it was once declared extinct in the wild. It suffered due to agricultural chemicals such as DDT, as well as poaching, lead poisoning and habitat destruction. A conservation plan was put in place in 1987, and this involved capturing all of the remaining wild condors. A total of 27 individuals were captured, and these individuals were put into a captive breeding program. The Andean condor and the California condor are linked in more ways than one, as the Andean condor was actually able to help the California condor. In 1988, after all the wild California condors had been captured, the US Fish and Wildlife Service began a reintroduction experiment involving the release of captive Andean condors into the wild. This meant that Andean condors were released into California, and this experiment was to find out if the California condors would be able to survive in the wild. At first you might think this was a very risky strategy, as there's nothing stopping the Andean condors from becoming invasive. Thankfully the US Fish and Wildlife Service planned for this, and only female Andean condors were released. Even though this didn't work in Jurassic Park it did work in this case, and the experiment was a success. The Andean condors were recaptured, and then they were re-released in South America. This eventually led to the reintroduction of the California condors, and thankfully today you can see them in the wild once again. This particular introduction was a very controlled introduction, and it was a very smart way to help the California condor bounce back. But now we can move on from one very responsible introduction to a very irresponsible introduction. For our next animal we can travel to quite a few places around the world, as we have the barn owl. The barn owl is the most widely distributed species of owl in the world, and it's also one of the most widespread species of all birds. They have adapted to almost all ecosystems and biomes, and they're found almost everywhere except from polar and desert regions. As it's found all over the world it has quite a few different subspecies, and these animals can differ in size, shape and colour. These birds mostly feed on small mammals, but in some cases they will also target other birds. They prefer to hunt at night, and they can fly almost without making a sound. Because the barn owl is found in so many places around the world, it's relatively hard to find a place where it's not native. It's absent from large parts of Asia, and it's normally not found in small island ecosystems. One island ecosystem where the barn owl was completely absent is Hawaii, but this all changed in the 1950s. Hawaii is one of the worst affected areas when it comes to invasive species, and it has large populations of invasive mammals. 
In the 1950s, the government wanted to get rid of these mammals, and it saw the barn owl as a solution. These owls were introduced into the islands, and cattle egrets were also introduced as well. It was believed that the barn owls could control the rat populations in the sugarcane fields, and it was thought that the cattle egrets could help with the hornfly numbers. Both of these introductions did not achieve what they were meant to, and now both of these creatures are now invasive in Hawaii. The barn owls and the cattle egrets started to prey on the endemic species, and most of these species had existed without predators for millions of years. Some of the species that are currently in danger are the Hawaiian stillet, the Hawaiian moorhen, the Hawaiian petrel, and the Hawaiian short-eared owl. This last species makes this introduction look even worse, as Hawaii already had a native species of owl. These native owls also feed on small mammals, so really it seems like there was no reason to introduce the barn owl at all. It was an extremely reckless decision to introduce this species, and Hawaii's ecosystem is still suffering today. Hopefully in the future the native owls will be able to bounce back, and hopefully the barn owls can be captured and relocated. For our final group of animals we can head to South America, as we have the peacock basses. The peacock basses are not in the same family as the basses of North America, and instead they are cichlids. These fish are native to the Amazon and Orinoco basins, and they are impressive predators in their native ecosystems. There are quite a few different species of peacock bass, but in this video I will be focusing on the butterfly peacock bass and the speckled peacock bass. If you're from Florida or if you're an angler, you'll already know where this story is going, as both of these fish were introduced into Florida. As I've covered countless times on the channel before, Florida is one of the worst affected areas when it comes to invasive species. You can find fish, mammals, reptiles and birds that don't belong here, and some of them are almost impossible to get rid of. Florida's freshwater ecosystems are some of the worst affected, and this is mostly because of Florida's climate. Florida has a humid, tropical climate, and this means that many exotic animals can survive here. Many fish from the pet trade end up in Floridian waterways, and some of these fish become established. This is why in the 1980s scientists looked for a solution, and they came up with introducing peacock bass. These fish were brought in to control species such as the Oscar, the Midas cichlid, and the spotted tilapia. Once again, you may think that this is a very risky thing to do, but strangely, the peacock bass was contained. These fish could not tolerate low water temperatures, and this meant that they couldn't spread outside of tropical Florida. They are also unable to tolerate salt water, so they cannot go out into the ocean, and so far, their introduction has been relatively successful. Not only do they control some invasive species, but they're also extremely popular with fishermen. This fishing industry boosts the economy, and I'm sure most fishermen are happy that they're there. Thankfully, there was a lot of research before they introduced these fish, and that's part of the reason why they haven't been a big problem. Of course, there are plenty of other stories that could have made it into this video, so if you know of any, then let me know down in the comments below. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like, and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these, but until next time, goodbye.